If you're looking for a new CFO, do you know exactly what type of CFO you need? I'm Eric Rourke, CEO of Rourke, and today I'm going to share with you the five types of CFOs. CFO turnover is a hot topic with reports of the average tenure of a CFO two to five years. Well, why? Why is that? It used to be that people stayed in their positions forever. Well, today, the office and the seat of the CFO has changed. Now, companies are hiring CFOs for different areas of growth within their business along their growth curve. Let's dive into the five types of CFOs. Type number one, the startup CFO and capital raising CFO. These CFOs are typically in venture capital backed companies or investor owned companies, such as life sciences, software. And the reason why is because they need to focus on fundraising. That's key. They're required to, because they're building intellectual property. So they're going to be required to continue to raise multiple funds. And the key is to be able to manage that money as efficiently as possible and preserve that cash until you can get to a final product that you can take the market. And the quicker you're able to do that, the more value that you provide for the investors. That's a very different type of CFO than you'll see as compared to some of these other CFOs. And the investor relationships and management of what is being, how the money is being spent and how they're going to get their returns is very critical in that stage. They also have to be very good at running a lean shop while being able to report good information timely to external parties. Our next CFO is a growth CFO. So once you get past that initial curve, you have a product or you're going through a growth stage, the growth CFO comes into play. So this is a CFO that's really operational in nature. They don't have to worry about the fundraising specialization as much. And what they're doing is they're really working with the team on the KPIs and the information and the strategy and the new markets to be able to grow the company. So these CFOs are very good at working with the internal management team operations and setting strategy. And they become important because not only is the revenue growth important and where you take the company as far as growth, but making sure that you are saving money and looking at cutting costs along the way. So that way you're very efficient. I can't tell you how many companies I've walked into as a CFO and was able to reduce a lot of unnecessary expenses and waste or be able to streamline things. They also have to be good at scaling up systems in order to be able to lay the platforms for that growth, as well as working with banks and investors. Our next CFO is a very specialized CFO. This is the public company CFO. Whether you're doing an IPO or you're already public, this CFO is under a tremendous amount of regulation and pressure, not only by the SEC, the analysts, and the investors as well. They're very specialized in the public markets or public companies, and there's an extreme amount of reporting and liabilities that go along with that. So they really want to understand how to work with investors, investor relations, Wall Street, and make sure they're meeting the SEC regulations, all of that along with growing the company. And if we look at liability, the CFO or the CAO is charged with signing the Sarbanes-Oxley 302 and 906 certifications, which pierce the corporate veil and hold the CFO, the, the head executive and the head financial person personally and criminally liable for the results of the reporting. And when we look at these, the regulation, you have the 33 Act, Securities and Exchange Act, you have the 34 Securities and Exchange Acts and complying with those. You have the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, you have Regulation FD. The list can go on and on and on with all the specialization that's required at that level. And due to the stakeholders, you want to make sure you have the right person. Our next type of CFO is the M&A or the exit CFO. So M&A transactions are some of the biggest transactions that a business will have. If you're an owner of a privately held business, chances are they'll be the most significant transaction that you have. Whether it's buy side or sell side, these transactions are, are have to be spot on. Otherwise, there's big dollars at stake. 
So sellers, it's really important to get the most value and be prepared through that transition. And having an experienced m and CFO that has a history of success in selling businesses alongside the investment bankers is going to net you out the most money, as well as even making sure that the transaction happens. So many people think about, oh, well, we're going through the transaction, but if you're not prepared or don't have the right representation from the financial end, that can actually deter buyers as well as affecting your price. So it's super important. If you're buying companies, that experience is absolutely critical. And the reason why is if you buy the right company, it can be very synergistic. If you buy the wrong company, it can actually be a big financial burden. And there's a lot of work and leadership that has to be done from working through the due diligence <clears throat> with the team individually, looking at projections, raising financing in order to do it, the acquisition, and then integrating the organization. Any organization that you acquire, as much work as you do, there's always an element of risk. And the more experienced professionals will help you reduce that element of risk, and therefore getting bigger profits and better returns. So consider bringing in a consultant uh, to be able to do this type of work unless you're doing it regularly. And as we go through our curve, lastly, as businesses get more mature or maybe markets change, products change, technologies changes, you have your turnaround CFO. Your turnaround CFO is meant to come in and be able to help companies through tough times. These are people that have to be very distinct, very clear on being able to analyze the financial information, make changes and typically abrupt changes to be able to drive the company back to profitability. Along the way, they may have to deal with specialty issues such as working with this, the, the bank and working in the special assets groups. They may have to work in the receivership. They may have to work through bankruptcy. There's a huge specialization on this and you cannot get it wrong. Any step in the, the process that goes wrong could be fatal or detrimental to the organization and not, could not exist. There are specialty knowledges of turnaround strategies and be able to manage cash flow that are critical during this stage. So if you're in the process of looking for a CFO, whether it's a CFO consultant, interim CFO, or hiring your next CFO, make sure the one that you hire has the experience that best aligns with the stage where you're at in the company. I've described five types of CFOs today. If you have any questions about which one is best for your company, by all means, please let us know. And then if you have anything that you would add in regards to the types of CFOs, please let us know in the comments below. Please let us know if you liked the video by hitting the thumbs up button. If you would like to subscribe to our channel and get more information on how accounting and finance can benefit your organization, hit the little bell and you'll be invited to the next video line.